So I'm back again talking about one of the most well-studied supplements in the world, and that is creatine monohydrate. In today's video, what we're gonna be doing is looking at how creatine can absolutely be supercharged and we can bolster its effects by combining it with certain ingredients. So in today's video, we'll break down what creatine is, how it can be utilized, the benefits, the science, and also we'll follow up with how we can stack it with other ingredients to make it even more effective. So what is creatine? Creatine is a naturally occurring compound found in small amounts in foods like meat, fish, and milk. It is also synthesized by the body, primarily in the liver, kidneys, and pancreas. Creatine is a combination of three amino acids, arginine, glycine, and methionine. Creatine is crucial for energy production, particularly during short bursts of intense physical activity, such as weightlifting or sprinting. Now, what does the research suggest around creatine supplementation? Research on creatine has consistently shown several benefits, particularly in the context of sports performance, muscle health, and potential cognitive effects. Here are some consistent key findings from scientific studies. Muscle strength and power. Creatine has been extensively studied for its ability to increase muscle strength and power, especially in activities requiring short bursts of intense effort, such as weightlifting and sprinting. Meta-analyses have consistently shown significant improvements in strength and power output with creatine supplementation compared to placebo. Muscle mass. It is often associated with increases in muscle mass, particularly when combined with resistance training. This effect is partly due to increased water retention within muscle cells and may also involve stimulation of protein synthesis. Recovery. Some studies suggest that creatine supplementation can enhance recovery between bouts of exercise, potentially reducing muscle damage and soreness after intense training sessions. Brain health and cognitive function. Research indicates that creatine supplementation might have neuroprotective effects and could potentially improve cognitive function in certain populations, although more studies are needed to confirm these effects. Safety. Creatine is generally considered safe when taken within recommended dosages. Long-term studies have not found significant adverse effects associated with creatine supplementation. Though individuals with pre-existing kidney conditions or those taking medications should consult a healthcare professional before use. Clinical applications beyond athletic performance, creatine has shown promise in clinical settings for conditions such as neuromuscular diseases, for example, muscular dystrophy, Parkinson's disease, and depression. Research in these areas is ongoing, but preliminary findings are encouraging. In summary, creatine supplementation has robust evidence supporting its efficacy in enhancing athletic performance, promoting muscle growth and strength, and potentially supporting brain health. Now moving on, let's have a look at the evolution of creatine. Creatine was first discovered in 1832 and can be traced back to the mid 1800s when Michel Eugène Chevreul isolated creatine from the basified water extract of skeletal muscle and named the crystallized precipitate after the Greek word for meat, Creus. Later studies in 1928 showed that creatine exists in equilibrium with creatinine, and research in the 1920s indicated that the body can store creatine, suggesting its potential use as a dietary supplement. In 1912, researchers at Harvard University, Otto Folin and Willie Glover Dennis, demonstrated that consuming creatine significantly enhances muscle creatine levels. By the late 1920s, researchers found that ingesting higher than normal amounts of creatine can increase intramuscular creatine stores. This led to the discovery of phosphocreatine, creatine phosphate, and underscored creatine's crucial role in skeletal muscle metabolism. Creatine gained attention after the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. An article published on August 7, 1992 in The Times revealed that Linford Christie, the gold medalist in the 100 meters, had used creatine prior to the Olympics. Although it's important to note that Linford Christie was later found guilty of doping in his career. Bodybuilding Monthly also mentioned Sally Gunnell, the gold medalist in the 400 meter hurdles as another user of creatine. Additionally, the Times reported that Colin Jackson, the 100 meter hurdler, had started taking creatine before the Olympics. If you're someone that's been trialing different supplements and you're still lacking that energy, spark, drive, and overall vitality, then you may want to check out my brand new supplement that I've just released called Katwa Pure. Katwa Pure harnesses the power of a particular Amazonian herb known as Katwaba bark, which has been used for centuries to boost mood, enhance energy levels, 
and act as an aphrodisiac. So definitely check out Katwa Pure. You can learn more by visiting inbeforesups.com. So how does creatine actually work in the human body? Creatine plays a crucial role in energy production, particularly during high intensity exercise and activities that require short bursts of intense effort. Here is how creatine operates in the body. In energy production, creatine is stored in muscles as phosphocreatine. During short bursts of intense physical activity, such as weightlifting or sprinting, the muscles rapidly break down adenosine triphosphate to release energy. ATP is the immediate energy source for muscle contraction. When ATP is broken down, it loses a phosphate group and becomes adenosine diphosphate. Phosphocreatine helps replenish ATP by donating a phosphate group to ADP, thereby quickly regenerating ATP. This process allows muscles to maintain high intensity contractions for longer periods. Over in muscle growth, creatine supplementation has been shown to increase muscle mass and strength gains, especially when combined with resistance training. This is thought to occur through several mechanisms, including increased water content in muscle cells, which may contribute to cell swelling and muscle growth, and enhance protein synthesis. In performance enhancement, by increasing the availability of ATP, creatine supplementation can improve performance in short duration, high intensity activities. This can lead to increased power output, strength, and overall athletic performance, particularly in activities like sprinting, weightlifting, and interval training. Buffering lactic acid, Creatine may also help buffer lactic acid accumulation in muscles during intense exercise, which could potentially delay the onset of muscle fatigue and allow for longer periods of high intensity exercise. There is also an emerging research suggesting that creatine may have neurological benefits, including potential cognitive enhancement and neuroprotective effects. This is due to its role in ATP production, which is crucial for brain function. Increasing anabolic hormones, creatine may enhance insulin sensitivity in muscle cells, potentially improving glucose uptake and utilization. This could indirectly support muscle growth and recovery by optimizing nutrient delivery to muscles. It may also transiently increase testosterone levels or influence growth hormone secretion during and after exercise, but research on this is limited. So what does creatine stack well with? Well, if you were to ask the average gym goer, most people take creatine alongside protein, beta alanine, alcitrulline, or some carbohydrates. But I think there are some other ingredients that creatine can stack well with that not many people even know about or have talked about. I'll get to those in a second. So what I wanna do is actually mention before we get into that, the side effects of creatine. Now, creatine is one of the most extensively researched supplements in sports nutrition and numerous studies have assessed the safety and efficacy over several decades. Now, creatine supplementation is generally well tolerated by most people, but like any supplement, it can have potential side effects, although they are typically mild. Number one is gastrointestinal issues. Some individuals may experience stomach discomfort, bloating, or diarrhea, especially when taking high doses of creatine or when starting a loading phase. Number two is water retention. Now, this may or may not actually be a side effect, some people like this like side effect and creatine pulls water into muscle cells, which can lead to water retention and weight gain, albeit primarily in muscle tissue and rather than under the, under the skin. So like I said there, it's hyperhydrating muscular cells with water. And number three is actually muscular cramps. So if you're not very well hydrated, creatine can increase susceptibility to dehydration. And that is why I recommend increasing your water intake when you start using creatine. Number four, allergic reactions. Very, very, very rare, but some people do experience uh, a minor allergic reaction. So what are the recommended dosages? Creatine doses may vary from person to person depending on gender, height, weight, muscle mass, and more factors. A general maintenance dose of 2.25 to 10 grams daily is recommended to reap the benefits of creatine with most consumers taking approximately three to five grams per day. When taking creatine for the first time or for those reincorporating it back into their routine, some like to do what is known as a loading phase, which involves taking 20 grams of creatine monohydrate per day, divided into four doses of five grams each. This loading phase is usually done for five to seven days to rapidly saturate muscle creatine stores, but is not mandatory. Ensure adequate hydration when using creatine as it draws water into muscle cells. This helps maximize its benefits and minimize potential side effects like muscle cramps. 
Consuming creatine with carbohydrates can increase insulin levels, which enhances the uptake of creatine into muscle cells. So what is this new ingredient that we can supercharge alongside creatine? It is actually something called guanadinoacetic acid, and it appears to display increased creatine levels in tissue as well as better overall strength benefits. So if we combine creatine with GAA, uh, we're gonna see a more powerful effect on hyperhydrating the mus muscle cells with creatine. So creatine and GAA are closely related compounds in the body's energy metabolism processes, particularly within muscle cells. GAA is a direct precursor in the biosynthesis of creatine. Now in the liver, GAA combines with the amino acid arginine to form guanadinoacetate, which is then methylated into S-adenosylmethionine to produce creatine. Now this process primarily occurs in the liver where creatine is synthesized and then transported to muscles and other tissues for storage and utilization. Now, while GAA itself is less commonly used as a dietary supplement compared to creatine, its role as a precursor to creatine synthesis suggests potential benefits in increasing creatine levels in the human body. However, research on GAA supplementation is not as extensive as creatine and, is, and its effectiveness and safety profiles are not as well established. So just for reference, if you do want to actually use a product that has creatine and GAA, I'll leave that linked down below in the video description. Now, the big question comes down to whether or not GAA is actually safe. Now, recently there has been some concerns that GAA supplementation in isolation may impact methyl group depletion and homocysteine. GAA is converted to creatine through a process that requires a methyl group from s adenosyl l methionine if too much GAA is consumed, this could theoretically deplete the body's stores of methyl donors such as methionine, choline, and B vitamins. However, studies have shown that typical doses of GAA do not significantly alter the levels of these important nutrients or impact DNA methylation. Next, some research has demonstrated that GAA in isolation can lead to increases in serum homocysteine. For example, participants taking 2.4 grams of GAA daily saw notable rises in their homocysteine levels, with one study reporting that 73.5% of subjects experience an increase after 10 weeks of GAA supplementation at three grams per day. However, the good news is that co-administration of certain substances can help mitigate this effect. For instance, combining GAA with betaine, which is known to lower homocysteine, along with B vitamins like B6, B12, and folic acid, has shown to prevent the rise in homocysteine levels as well as combining GAA and creatine. This is why I really like Crevolution, which is the product linked in the description, as it contains betaine and other creatine sources. This suggests that while GAA can elevate homocysteine, it's crucial to consider dietary strategies that include these protective agents to counteract the potential risks. For more information, this article has a really good breakdown of GAA. So if you are currently using creatine, you may want to supercharge it by stacking it with GAA and some of the other ingredients mentioned in this video. Creatine found naturally in foods such as meat, fish, and milk is also synthesized in the body, primarily in the liver, kidneys, and pancreas. Now, it is composed of the amino acids arginine, glycine, and methionine. So one key way to remember creatine is AGM arginine, glycine, methionine, AGM. It's composed of those three amino acids. Now, it is one of the most heavily researched supplements on the market with vast studies providing uh, its effectiveness and benefits such as energy metabolism and production, muscle growth, performance enhancement, recovery, and brain health. So there are a variety of different types of creatine on the market. However, the most popular uh, the, and research variant is creatine monohydrate. And this new research indicates that by taking creatine monohydrate alongside GAA, it is a superior in comparison to just taking creatine on its own. So if you're listening to this in 2024, as a reminder, if you're taking creatine monohydrate, stack it with GAA or use the product linked in the video description to get an even more potent effect on improving your overall health. That's it for me today, guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.